Okay, now look, we're in the, we're in the pickle. We're, we're 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 seven eight hours late, right? And right now you you just told me we're we've gone. We just entered Montana. Now you said something very interesting. How long <laughs> how long are we gonna be in Montana? We were supposed to be in Montana for at least twelve hours. I'm not specifically sure, but I know for a fact it is over twelve hours. We're gonna be in Montana, more would like you, fourteen. So would you from one end of the state to another because. Montana is more like a, a rectangle, right? Yes. So we turn the length, the whatever, the left, long side of the rectangle. Now you was you in school? What, 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 what's the what? What am I trying to say here with this rectangle thing? It's like your phone. It's like the, It's like that part. Okay. Like that. Okay. So how do you know all this stuff? Well, as a UND student, I sort of had to study the Empire Builder a bit. Yeah, so U- whoa, 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 whoa! As a UND, what's UND? University. University of North Dakota. That's nowhere near Montana. Well, it is, it is it, along it is. the line, and okay. being from California, okay. this is the route that I'm more than likely going to be taking from Grand Forks to Portland, and then Portland south. Mm. So, yeah, having studied the route and having taken the route before too, you're going to be in Montana for a very long time. Okay, now you're saying that, but you're saying that we're missing something, but we're going to get something else. Oh, the yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention? This is James, uh, your cafe attendant. Ladies and yes, gentlemen, James. at this time, cafe on the you lower should... level, the observation car closed for a post-meal break. What do you say? The observation car closed for a post-meal break. An announcement will be made upon reopening. Please, let's go to opening announcement before making your way to cafe. Okay, so he's cafe is closed. Cafe and the lower level, the observation car closed for a post-meal break. Okay. The announcement will be made upon reopening. Thank you. Good day. The crew crew has got to eat. Okay, so so tell me more about this. Why you know? Well, where in California are you from? I'm from uh, Newport Beach, which is around an hour south of Los Angeles, an hour north of San Diego. Oh, so you you take the train all the time? You take it up? What do you, how do you how do you take it up from 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 uh, North Beach to What's your route? What's your route when you when you when you go when you go to the UN? You well, know. if I would go to University of North Dakota with the train, this is my first time as I'm a freshman, so this is my first time taking the train back. As I usually fly, but it was too expensive to fly this time, so um, I'd usually if I go from home to school, it would be leaving Los Angeles on the Coast Starlight up to Portland, Oregon, and then I'd go from Portland, Oregon, east on the Empire Builder to Grand Forks, North Dakota. Okay, so that's your school is in Grand Fork. Yes. And why you pick that school? Because it has the best aviation uh, program in the United States, and I want to take the commercial pilot path. Mm. So. So, but you're a beach person, aren't you? Aren't you supposed to be a surfer or something like that? Nah. Well, not really. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Okay, so. But I so, know a good amount of friends from high school that are. Okay. So, so what, what made you interested in planes, I guess? Well, I used to fly a lot. What do you mean fly a lot? I used to fly commercial a lot as a passenger mm-hmm. to the East Coast at least twice a year. Oh. And I've my favorite part was the flying. Mm. So, therefore, that's how I've had a love for flying. I've flown ever since I was one. Mm. And so for 18 years, I've been flying commercially. A good amount of times. So what what steps do you have to take now? I mean, are you are you? This is on your freshman year, but what what steps have you taken so far to to prepare yourself for this license or whatever you're gonna your aviation career? Well, right now I'm just at the start of getting my private pilot's license, okay. which is like the basic. I call par- private pilot training is like your basic training mm-hmm. for being a pilot. Mm-hmm. Is, is pilot going to be a passe thing? Or is it going to be a, in, the, in the future? Is it, is it a thing to invest in because it's going to people are always going to need pilots? Or? Yeah, it is a thing to invest in, especially as the need for pilots is going to grow. I mean, there's already a pilot shortage going on right now. Like, really? My school has invited all these alum that are working for United, Delta, American to come to our school and have an event like in the evening, to recruit us to those airlines because they are really in dire need of more pilots as the retiring age is 65 mm-hmm. and there are more and more pilots retiring than there are hiring. But what, what, what people are not interested in flying? Anymore? It just costs a lot of money to fly, to flight train. Flight train. Mm-hmm. 
to but, but the school by going to school is is it cheaper to go to to a university to learn how to no because flight fees are separate from tuition however the universities are more prestigious the airlines are going to want to see that you went to a university mm. for aviation mm. Mm. but it's still going to cost a lot to go to school yeah and then you got to do this separate thing what's the separate thing you have to do you have to pay flight fees every no it's every time you fly you have to what do you have to do to what are these flight fees? What, what are flight fees? Flight fees are the fees that you pay for every hour of flying. So like your flight instructor fees, your fuel. Okay, you have to pay for the person that's teaching you how to fly. Yeah. They have to pay for the fuel for the plane. Yep. And then you have All to your books for the flight training are separate. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. But that's an investment. What's it is the, an investment. What's, what's the return? Is it are the pilots paid good? Yeah, they're getting good pay. I mean, Delta, United, and American, the three major U.S. airlines, are getting good pay increases mm. over the last several months. Mm. I mean, it's the best time to join the airlines. Right now, this time. Of, uh, yeah. But with, uh, tell me something else. Now, so what about, you know, you hear all these big things, all these people getting, uh, how you say that, uh, private planes and stuff like that. Is that a, is that a thing? Is that, gonna, is that a thing that people want? Yeah. Everybody's buying these private planes and the private... No, uh, not really. Mm. Unless it's like buying, like, let's say, a single-engine propeller airplane mm. just to use for recreation. Flying, you know, private... I can't really say because I've never flown private other than flying, you know, my single-engine propeller aircraft. So I can't really say. When you say your single engine, what does that mean? You have a single engine propeller aircraft? You I don't have, have one, mm. but I fly them. Your basic pilot's license only covers single engine planes. Oh, okay. So single should... engine propeller planes, yeah. So this would be your first year. So what's your next step? What, what's, what's the next thing? Then the next step is to go to instrument training. Hmm. Learning how to fly in low visibility, how to rely on your instruments. And then you go to your commercial training which is basically like how you fly for compensation or higher, and then you get your multi-engine rating, and then you get your, after you get your multi-engine, you then get your airline transport pilot, which is a 1,500 hour minimum required hours to earn, and that is your golden ticket to fly for the airlines. However, with the university, it's only 1,000 hours where you will need to um, have minimum to. Well, why, why do they cut it down? Because, they because of the university being more prestigious. I mean, like with the university, you have to get a 76% on every single exam, unit exam, in the ground school at the university mm -hmm. per FAA requirements. So uh, are the, is the university booming? Is it, is it overcrowded? Is it... it? No, no. I mean, not many people know about the University of North Dakota. The only People that really know about University of North Dakota is people from the Minneapolis area, which is like almost 60% of the entire university freshman class that I know of is from Minnesota. Really? Yeah. Oh. There are more people that I know from Minnesota than from other parts of North Dakota. However, Grand Forks is right along the boundary of North Dakota and Minnesota. So what do you think that if the airlines are looking for people, uh, should they be pushing people to go to, <laughs> to the University of North Dakota or what? I mean, I, mean it, it, I can't imagine it. What's there to do doing University of North, North Dakota? You don't have a big football team, do you? you big... University of North Dakota does have a great ho college hockey team. Hockey team, of course. Yeah, 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 of course. Okay, okay, okay. Go Sioux! <laughs> okay, it's the Fighting Hawks, but at the arena, no one even recognizes that they changed the name of the Fighting Hawks. They still recognize them by the Fighting Sioux. And that, hand, uh, and that hand oh, that's gesture. Oh, like the Indian. Uh, yeah, and that hand Indian. gesture that I just did, that's what the fans do every time the PA announcer, like, announces um, the Fighting Hawks when they take the ice. And then what was the, what's the gesture? Let's go soon. Mm -hmm. So, that's not Indian. Yeah, that is not. So that has The not... tribe was actually honored to have that mascot since mm -hmm. it wasn't like, you know, Cleveland Indians or Atlanta Braves. I mean, it was after an actual tribe. I mean, they actually felt honored, mm -hmm. but the 
NCAA back in 2012 said, nope, you're changing it. Okay. All right. But you kept you kept the gesture, so they yeah. still, they, they still understand. Yeah. And and, and the spirit is well. The people the people have spoken. They're going to keep their 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 chant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it doesn't matter. You know, hawks, whatever it is. Okay. Fine. All right. So uh, tell me more about this. The, the, are your classes big or they small or whatever? My classes. It depends. One class had over a hundred fifty people. Mm -hmm. The other had maybe twenty people. Okay, so the university cannot operate any classes that are over eight, under eight people. Of course, yeah, so it's just a matter of whatever. Okay, so tell us more about our trip. You say we're we're we're, uh, we're going to miss something in uh, Montana. Yes, we are going to miss Glacier National Park, unfortunately. However, we are. But going we're to going to miss it because of the time. We're or? going to miss it because of the time. Well, what time are we going to be passing? We're going to be passing it around three thirty to four a.m. Mountain now, time. Now, I know. I always have to try to find solutions today. So, I think what should happen is the, the Amtrak should have some sort of big light <laughs> that goes on top of the train. So, when you go past Glacier, you shine the light as you go past or whatever. However, you would get some good uh, stargazing views because oh, okay. Glacier National Park is very well known for stargazing because there's not a lot of oh. light pollution there. So, we just so you can through. come into the sights of your car and still... Just look you, up. Yeah, if you want to be up at 3 a.m., and also with the snow-covered trees, you might be awake, as there's also a lot of curves. We're being used to flat, uh, straight tracks. There's gonna be a lot of curves when you hit the mountains. Now, when the snow comes, it, it, there's a, a there's the stars sort of reflect off the snow. How do we do we know? Well, the stars don't reflect off the snow, but because there's n no light pollution. Yeah, I understand. But there's no moon. To, uh, I don't even know what the moon is tonight. Yeah, I don't even know either. Okay. So what's what's going to be the next thing? Okay, it's three a.m. We all waking up. Uh, uh, first light will be I don't know what seven o'clock or something like that. Yeah, first light will be like seven or eight o'clock. Okay, it's winter time. So yeah. so this is this is mountain. What, this is this is mountain time. Right yes. Now. Okay. So seven or eight o'clock, then we'll be. Uh, oh, okay. We can look around. Um, then where where, where we're going to be then at seven or eight o'clock? We're supposed to be in Spokane, Washington. Okay. Or around, or if we're delayed further, which usually would happen. On a delay like this, um, we'd be around the Montana-Idaho state line, passing along the Kootenai River. Kootenai River, River. Yeah. Okay. Anything to see there? There are some good scenery with that, especially because usually it would be in the middle of the night, but it's since it would be daylight, possibly, the train will go right along the side of the river for like 20 miles, mm. and then... You'll hit Idaho, and then into Spokane, Washington. And then from Spokane, the scenery becomes desert. And then as you make your way up the Cascades, it starts to become snowy again. And then the other side of the Cascades, where you'll hit Seattle, it starts getting rainy and cloudy. There's nothing to see there, though? There is stuff to see there. I mean, the rest of the way from Spokane is... Not even from Spokane, but from Shelby, Montana, all the way to Seattle is the most scenic part of the journey. Oh, okay. So I'll be missing anything. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Not much. Oh. So it'll be worth it. So we, 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 we missed the, the glacier part, but we'll see something else. Yeah. And the train doesn't go right through Glacier National Park. It goes right through the boundaries mm -hmm. of Glacier National Park. But you can see it. Yeah. In the day. Uh, so it's better. it's better the way we're doing it delay or not yeah okay and i call it bonus time because you're getting more of your money's worth i mean yeah i might be missing my connection in portland but you're getting your money's worth when you're delayed because you're not delayed while sitting in a terminal like mm -hmm. when you're flying you're delayed while on the journey mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. so you're getting more of your money's worth so okay. i just call it bonus time bonus time okay but uh, sit the uh, you're, you're Armenian. What, how do you say your name? Arsham. Arsham. But it's, it's spelled longer than Arsham. Is that, is that a nickname or the Arsham? No, uh, it's not a nickname. So, spell your name. A is in Alpha. Yeah. R is in Romeo. S is in Sierra. H is in Hotel. A is in Alpha. 
and M as in Mike. Oh, it's small. Okay, I thought your name was longer. Oh, no. your, your Instagram name is longer. What's that? Well, that has my last name in it too. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So you're a proud Armenian. Yes. On both sides of your family? Or no, mother? just one side. But, but the other side is white bread American. Like they don't even know their <laughs> DNA. <laughs> Well, 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 well yeah, the, the unwhite bread part, why do you all come down on the white? <laughs> because somebody looks at you oh, he's just white, you know? But, but you're saying the Armenian makes you something else? But. Well, sort of. I mean, I try not to talk much about it because not many people know what Armenian is. I mean, I used to make be made fun of a lot at school what? for my nationality. Because not many kids would know what Armenian is. You know, they knew what... Um, like they knew different nationalities, but you know, being like the minority of minorities, you know, there's only three, there's only like ten million Armenians in the world. Yeah, because y'all got wiped out or something like that. Yeah, like, oh. by the Turks back in 1915. Okay, y'all remember that? That's part of your history. The, yes, your, your parents. But Who the was? U.S. government did not recognize it until 2021. Really? That's because. Like we sold arms to Turkey, and we still sell arms to Turkey, and we have bases in Turkey, and if you talk well, about we Turkey, mean it's United a States. crime. Mean, the United States government. Okay. Oh. I thought that was kind of interesting. So, okay, so so, so what happens, uh, so you, you have this uh, Armenian pride in your family. What, what is your mother your father's Armenian? It's my dad's side. It's dad's side, okay. So that, that, that makes it like legacy. Do, have you been to Armenia? Have you been? Twice, yes. Oh, so? Tell me about it. Well, uh, is there persecution in Armenia now? No. Okay. okay. No, it's a democratic-run government, mm. ex-Soviet state. Mm. Oh, so in the Soviet state. Yeah, it okay. used to be part of the Soviet Union. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I had to. I had to do this way. Right? Where, where, where is it located vis-a-vis? -vis? Everybody knows now. Everybody knows where. Where, where the. Um, Whoever we're fighting right now over there, or somebody's fighting over We're there. fighting Ukraine. Okay. Russia's fighting Ukraine. Okay, well, how, how close are you to... Where, where side it's pretty close to Ukraine. It's like, if you take a map of the Black Sea, Ukraine's on the northwest side, and then Georgia's on the southeast side. Georgia the country, not the state. Mm -hmm. Most people know the state of Georgia, not yeah. really the country Georgia. And so it's like southeast of Georgia. Oh, the Armenia, southeast of Georgia. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I got it. So it's actually more towards under under Russia, no? Yeah, more under Russia, yeah. I mean, under, I mean... Geo. Yeah, it's like under Russia, or above Iran, and right. sandwiched between Azerbaijan and Iran. Oh, okay, all right, okay. Okay, okay. thank you for that. Uh, you know, little less now, because, you know, us Americans, we don't know anything about that. Yeah. Okay, here. Okay, Charlie's here, so we're going to end this little, this little conversation. Because what up? It's Char Charlie's... No, put your face in there so you, they, they can see the... And, and tell us and tell and, 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 and uh, wait wait uh, Charlie I just just one one thing with you about this day okay. we're gonna play poker with Charlie. Yeah. He's a he's a ringer. We just we just we we're, we're just victims right here. So <laughs> don't worry, it's yeah. nothing, nobody has <laughs> stake like that. Okay, we're gonna see you all later. Another see time. Uh, bye.